Hi, uh, in this video we're going to see another way of uh, uh, getting a single value input from uh, a user. And that is by using uh, these two tags, the select tag uh, in combination with the option tag. And again, as a useful uh, uh, resource, I would refer you to the w3schools.com website uh, on this URL. <clears throat> but uh, before we see uh, what we can do with the select and option tags. Uh, let's review the shortly what we did in the previous video. And we had again the single value input, but then with uh, radio buttons as the non. So we use the input tag with uh, the type attribute, attribute and having as value as radio. And then we also saw how to format better uh, the form fields by using the field set uh, tag in combination with a legend tag. Shortly, let's review the previous assignment uh, where we uh, uh, were asking to make another form field that would require a single input from the user. And uh, we needed to review uh, the information uh, on at this URL and find out uh, how to have uh, the option that would expect to be mostly chosen, already selected uh, from the users. So let's see the solution uh, to that assignment. So uh, essentially, well, uh, again, uh, I did the same thing. So we have a field set with a legend that groups uh, these uh, uh, input tags and labels. Now the form field has to do with the newsletter preferences, as you can see here, which is again a common field in subscription forms with these three options do not want to receive it, they receive it once per week and receive it once per month. That is the newsletter. And as you can see here in the code, <clears throat> uh, I want to highlight that all three input tags have as name the newsletter that is necessary for input type radios to have the same name. Nevertheless, they have a different ID. So in this case, the first option which is do not want to receive it has the ID and zero and has as a value zero. We're going to see how to handle those values later on, uh, later at the end of this course, actually, when we look at uh, PHP. The second option has an ID N1 and value of one. And the third one has an ID of N2 and a value two. And it also has the attribute checked. And as you can see, if you would actually use this code and reload uh, the HTML page, you're going to see that this option will be by default chosen. So the solution to the previous assignment was to also include this attribute in uh, the input. Now, in, in this uh, video, uh, we're going to look at a different way to have a single value select and that is with the select and option uh, tags. Uh, and for that reason, uh, we're going to use uh, a different uh, form field that is uh, usually requested in subscription forms and that is the form field of country. So we're going to ask the our user to select his or her country. As mentioned earlier, we're going to use the select uh, tag. Uh, we always need to give that a name. So since this has to do with uh, the country of the user, we're going to name it as country and we're going to give it again the same uh, identifier of country. Now, uh, the this uh, tag works a bit different than the input one in the sense that you also need to include options for uh, the user to select. So the option needs to have a value, a text value in between uh, the opening and closing tags. So I'm going to uh, type in the Netherlands as the first option that the user can select. And the second thing that you need to include is a value, which uh, can be anything essentially. So in this case, uh, for the, uh, the first country, which is the Netherlands, I'm going to include the value NL. Again, we're going to see how to utilize uh, those values uh, later on with uh, 
JavaScript and PHP. Now, since there are more countries that uh, our users uh, can choose from, uh, well, we're gonna uh, have some more of this. So the second choice would be, or the second option would be Belgium. And I'm also gonna add a third option, uh, that of, oops, that of uh, Germany. And again, along with the textual input, we need to insert a value. Now, once we save that file and we go to our browser to refresh it, so as you can see, here is our drop down menu as it's known. Nevertheless, we use the select tag and option in combination with the option tags. Well, as you can see, uh, the presentation is not ideal. That's why, again, we have the label tag as we know by now. So uh, the label tag should be descriptive of uh, the form field. And as we also mentioned, we need to use the for attribute in the label tag and match it with the value of the ID attribute of the form field. So the for attribute needs to have the value country. So if we would save and refresh, you can see now that we have this label right here and uh, the drop down menu. Now, again, you can see that the presentation is not ideal. And for that reason, I'm going to also add a div tag in order to uh, improve the presentation. I'm going to intent the code, save the file and refresh the page. And as you can see now, the uh, submit button uh, went uh, below. So now I have uh, certain countries uh, to choose from. And that uh, concludes uh, essentially the use of the select and option tags. The assignment for uh, uh, this video is based on uh, the uh, code that we just created to make the previous select to have an additional first option, which is uh, although empty, and to make the previous select uh, to have the last option chosen when the page loads. And also, I'm going to ask you also to change the values of the options to numerals. So instead of having text values, to have numerals. Uh, now, a second part of the assignment asks you to look at the information on the select tag at the following URL, again on W3Schools and to find out how to make a form field in which the user can select several values. So like it is here, as it's shown in this uh, screenshot example, by actually pressing the control key and uh, the mouse button, a user can select more than one uh, weekdays. Now, again, the solution to the assignments will be given in the following video and the following video will uh, deal with special text inputs and more specifically we're going to look again at the input tag but then of type email and type password and we're also going to see some interesting attributes uh, that have been introduced with html5 that is the placeholder attribute and the require the required attribute that are specifically important when it comes to web forms but all of that till uh, the next video